In today's video, I'm gonna show you how you can draw this cartoon wizard from scratch using the iPad in Procreate. Just like all my videos, it's in real time, so you can follow along every single step of the way from the sketch to the inks to adding color flats, adding shadows and highlights, and then finally finishing it off with a quick background. If you follow along with any of my video tutorials too, I really urge you to post your work online. If you're on Instagram or Twitter, share it on there and make sure you tag me at BJ Dell for your chance to see your artwork featured in one of my upcoming videos, just like the people that you see here that followed along with my last penguin tutorial. That was the last video today though, it's all about the wizard, so let's jump into it. All right guys, so let's go ahead and draw a cartoon wizard. Starting out, I'm using a 4,000 by 4,000 pixel, 300 DPI canvas. It's an RGB canvas. For my brush, I'm gonna start out sketching with my cartoon sketch pencil. That's part of my cartooning pack for Procreate. And for my color palette, once again, I've got this pre-made, so you can download the exact same colors that I'm using in today's tutorial. If you go to my website, bjdell.com, underneath the YouTube reference materials page, which I'll link this down below, you can download that. There's also a video at the top of the page that walks you through how to install a palette in Procreate. If you've never done it before, and just a heads up, I did revamp my website, so if you're on mobile, the pages are gonna load a lot easier. I just had to split them up between different pages, so the link goes to the page that you can find this on. And then finally, on my Apple Pencil, I have the ProDraw Grip. ProDraw is a company that I launched last month making iPad accessories for digital artists like yourself. This is our first product. Works on both gens of the Apple Pencil and you can find a link to this down in the description below as well. So let's go ahead and get started. First thing I do when I begin a design is I start out with some really basic shapes. So we're just gonna start out with an oval here in the center, kind of small oval, and then we're gonna draw a bigger oval down here at the bottom. So basically what these are gonna represent, the top one is gonna be where the face goes, the bottom is gonna be the beard. Now that we have those, we can kind of start connecting things here. So I'm gonna pull down some curved lines here from the side. Then when they get to the edge of that other oval at the bottom, we're gonna pull them back in here to a point and that's gonna be the beard as it comes down there. So this stage, everything's supposed to be rough and really sketchy. We're just getting the ideas out of the head and into the iPad, onto the iPad, onto the canvas right now. We'll kind of fine detail this in the next step when we ink. All right, let's do the hat next. So we're gonna do a curve line here at the top for that brim of the hat that kind of covers that top part of the head. So a curve line here that kind of goes back in towards the head there. And then we'll do a bigger oval here on the outside for the rest of that brim of the hat. It goes across the top there. All right, zoom out just a little bit here for the hat itself. So we're gonna go a little bit further over than that beard line starting here. And we'll pull up an angled line into another angled line here. Kind of have this come back down. Another angled line here. Once again, kind of pulling it further away. I started here at the beard, but we need to come further out here. Another angled line here to where that hat starts to come down. And we'll bring those lines down here. I think I want it to come out even further here, so we'll pull it out even further. Having those lines come down, we can even make some jagged lines here to where that fabric's kind of folding just to give it a little bit more personality than just having a straight line coming out of there. Just kind of darken it up a little bit. All right, next up then, let's go ahead and let's get his shoulders in here. Gonna do a really basic thing here just with some hunched shoulders coming down here into the arms on each side. Do some curved lines here for the belly and that chest coming up there. Then we'll probably have some tapered lines here, just kind of for the crease in the fabric for those armpits there. All right, from here then, kind of where these curve lines or the angled lines are coming down, kind of follow those and that'll be where the hair is gonna come in. Kind of give him some long flowing hair here that's gonna fall down over top of those shoulders. Get that blocked in there. 
And then we can work on the face here. So I'm gonna start out with the nose. And where these two ovals meet, we're just gonna do another oval here, the bottom of that oval kind of hitting those. Then I'll kind of square this off a little bit here. I don't want it to be a perfect oval, so just kind of square it off a, pat, a little bit there. Starting with some ovals here for the eyes. One on the left and one on the right. Get the pupils in here like that. Got some tapered lines here coming up for the bridge of the nose there. And then let's give him some eyebrows too. So I'm gonna do a curve line here coming up over the brim of the hat. This is a fun little trick that I like to do in cartooning with characters wearing hats or even with the hair having the eyebrows actually extend up over those. Of course, it's not realistic at all. Your eyebrows aren't gonna extend over your hat or over your hairline, but something you can get away with cartoons and it gives just a little bit more of a fun zany expression. So we'll kind of darken those in so we remember those of the eyebrows there. All right, now coming up here, we'll kind of pull down here for the beard coming in to the face there. Of course, the mustache, we're gonna kinda use that line here to get us to where we need to be close to the mustache. I'm gonna go a little bit above and we'll do some ovals here to start kinda blocking in the mustache. Then I'm gonna pull these up to kinda to a point. So it's gonna come back up and around like this. Once again, really messy really sketchy right now. I don't take a lot of time to make everything look perfect during this stage because that's what the inking stage is for. So we'll see if this is one of my first videos you watched. Maybe you think this looks a little rough around the edges and it's kind of supposed to. All right, let's get this beard kind of knocked out a little bit more. We'll bring in some tufts of hair here for the beard and we'll bring that down to the bottom as well. Kind of have that kind of flow down in here, coming down to that point. For the mouth, I think we're just gonna kind of do an open mouth here. So we'll just do a curve here. That'll kind of be filled in. And then we'll have the lip here at the bottom, just kind of sticking out there. All right, and I'm gonna go back through and just darken up a little bit around these edges. So we'll be able to see in the next stage, we are gonna drop the opacity on this. So just making sure I can still see everything for the next stage going forward. It's kind of the key here. All right, and that's our sketch. Like I said, pretty loose, pretty messy, pretty simple, but that gets us started in the right direction. And the next step then is gonna be the inks. So let's do that now. We're gonna come up here to our layers menu. I'm gonna hit the plus button to make a new layer. And then on the sketch layer, layer one, I'm gonna hit the N to bring up blend mode. And then I'm gonna drop down the opacity here to about 30%. We wanna be able to see it, but we don't want it to be too dark. And you can see now as I drop that opacity too, it looks a little less messy and a little less sketchy. We can kind of see what's going on. And that's why, like I said, I don't spend a lot of time during that stage because we're gonna go over it now. So on layer two, this is gonna be our inks layer. I'm gonna come up here to my color palette. I've got this kind of midnight blue color that we're gonna use for the inks. And then my brush, using that same folder here, we're gonna switch over then to my standard anchor streamline. That's part of that same pack. This is my go-to inking brush for Procreate for this type of work. And for the size on a 4,000 by 4,000 canvas, my default, I have it set at 8%. That gives me kind of the the thickness of lines that, that I'm going for. Okay, with that done, we need to decide where the light source is coming from because I like to use different line weights in my work. Uh, line weights kind of do the heavy lifting when the viewer is looking to see where's the, the light source coming from. So a thin line is gonna give you an area where the highlights are. It's gonna be closer to the light source. A thicker line is gonna be further away from the light source where the shadows are. I think in this one, we'll have the light source coming in from this top left corner. And we'll probably have like a little bit of bounce light here coming in from the bottom as well. Maybe he's got kind of like some 
crazy stuff going on, wizard magician stuff, and he's got some magic over here happening and magic down here. I wanna use a kind of bright neon color for this. I've actually got the this bright blue teal color, green teal color here. So to give off that effect, we'll have kind of two different light sources coming in from those ways. So lighter lines here, thicker lines over here. And when I say that too, the difference between the lines is subtle. It's not something as crazy as this with the difference. It's a lot more subtle than that and we'll kind of work into that as we go. So let me zoom in here now. I know a lot of times on my videos, I've tried lately not to zoom in and out a lot, but I think on certain cases like this, it's kind of doing you a disservice if you don't see my full process. I zoom in and out a lot when I'm doing personal work and not doing it in videos, you really don't get the full feel of what I'm doing usually working off camera. So I'm gonna zoom in and out a lot on this particular video. So you're, you're warned right now, but hopefully it'll assist you in kind of seeing how I do things. I'm gonna start out with the nose here. And I'm just gonna start out in the center, kind of lighter line there at the top and kind of heavier here as we go down. I don't wanna connect those lines, but I'm gonna use my eraser here. If I hold down the eraser, it's gonna to switch to that exact same brush that I'm using to ink. And I'm just gonna thin out these lines a little bit as they come together. So it kind of looks like they're meeting up, but they really aren't, there's a gap right there. All right, switching back to my uh, brush now. Let's go ahead and get the, the eyes in here. With the eyes, I like to start out with a thin line here go into a thicker line as I come around where that lid of the eye is and then lighter here at the bottom. This, with this brush and the pressure sensitivity, it just requires a light press beginning, heavier as you go around and lighter as you come back down to the end of that stroke. So watch how I do that. Holding down then, I can lock that in. You see it gives me a nice oval there and I just need to repeat that process here on the backside making sure that I kind of get these the same size from left to right. That looks pretty good. I can go ahead and get the ovals in here for the pupil. Kind of want it to come all the way down, like I've got it in the sketch here. So let me start that again. If you hold down here, you can lock in another oval there. Locking in another oval over here. And then I also want a thin line around here for that iris. We'll go ahead and give an iris around each of those pupils here. Just like I said, thin lines here. We don't want those too thick. All right, next up, I'm gonna go ahead and do the mustache next. Now this is where I'm gonna go ahead and start adding in extra lines that don't exist in the sketch. This is where I start to add in those details. So I'm gonna start out with a thin taper here and back up into the nose there. And these are gonna be thinner lines here and a thicker line here at the bottom. But not super crazy thick, like I said, just a, a hint at a little bit different line weight there. I'll thicken that up as I go back around there. Now with these tapered lines here, as I do these, I'll kind of explain. With this brush, you get the exact same settings as I am using right now, as you see it, if you purchase this brush. So I know a lot of people ask exactly what my settings are. They're not getting the exact same look to the tapers. And the reason that that is, is just because it takes practice to actually understand and learn how much pressure you need to apply and when to apply it, when to let up pressure. All the settings are the same for the brush. The only setting that might be different on your end is the pressure curve for Procreate. I say might be because if you've changed it, then it's different. I just let mine go to the default setting. So I've made no changes there. If you haven't either, everything's set up exactly the same for you. So keep that in mind if you are seeing different results. Just like anything else, if you would have a you know, traditional style tool that you're using and you're watching a, a video with you know, painting with a, a brush or if you're even using an inking brush, just gonna start adding in some lines here for some of the, the hair strands there. 
but it's the same thing. You just have to get comfortable with the tools that you have. There is a learning curve. So definitely keep that in mind as well. All right, next up, I'm gonna do the beard. Now, of course, we've got this mustache here in the center and I don't wanna overlap and have to worry about erasing lines here if I go over past here. So one of my tips that I offer to you is make a new layer for areas like this. We can ink on multiple layers and then combine them later. So here, what I can do is I can pull this line down, I can pull this line down, I can go into those lines that I've already done, but as I go to my eraser then, you'll see I can erase these and I don't hit the lines that I've already made there. So it frees you up to start the strokes higher than you want to to begin with and lower. Starting the stroke up higher gives you more control going into that stroke. Same thing with ending it. You have total control and having those on separate layers assists you in making that possible. So we'll continue here with the beard, doing the same thing here, pulling in some tapers, pulling in tapered lines down here, and once again, going in with that to erase the overlaps. And then here, it really comes in beneficial. So I can start this line further up, so I have the control to make it look like those lines are one continuous line even though they go down past through that mustache. And we'll just continue this process from one side to the next here. This part I am gonna overlap and I will have to erase, but I want a nice point there at the bottom. You'll see there, I took a few kind of swipes at that, a few attempts. Don't be afraid to go back and just undo, redo a bunch of times. In my personal work, I'll undo, redo a line 20, 30 times sometime just, just to make sure it's the exact line that I'm going for, which is one of the beautiful things of digital art as well. You have that option. Doing something with ink, you know, on paper, you're locked in. Once you, you lay down that line, you're kind of set there with it. And with digital art, you've got a, a little bit more leeway as far as making sure that that line is exactly how you want it to be. I want this taper to come up a little bit higher there. There we go. And you'll see too, I'm also switching back and forth between my brush and my eraser. I have the Apple Gen 2 pencil, and I usually use the double tap feature to go back and forth. I don't like to do that in my videos though, because it's hard to tell when I'm actually erasing and when I'm drawing. And especially for those people that don't have the Apple Gen 2, they might not realize what's going on that you can do that with these. So that's why I just go back and forth manually during these videos. Of course though, with the ProDraw Grip, you've got the finger scoop here that allows you that access to the, the double tap. So that's why I added that because that's something I usually use. All right, now that we've done those, let's go ahead and merge those together by pinching. And then I'm gonna make another new layer here because we're gonna use that same technique here at the bottom. So doing the sleeves here, the shoulders as those come up, I can overlap there. Same thing here. This line's gonna be a little bit heavier back here because of that light source, but I can erase here. Now this is where these little lines here for the, like I said, the overlaps of the, the fabric there where the armpits come in. This is where I will zoom in super far. So I'm going in super far on this because getting some nice tapers here and getting some really thick, even though they're thin, but right now they're thick, but getting some really bold lines here and getting nice crisp lines. Once we zoom out, you'll see those are quite a bit smaller. But to be able to do that and get those really crisp lines, you've got to zoom in quite a bit. I always say if it looks good close up, once you zoom out, it's going to look even better. So once again, use that zoom to your benefit. Like this here, I can see I'd like a, a better taper on that, a little sharper taper. So once I zoom in then, I have a little bit more control to make that taper a lot better. And hopefully you guys are still with me and following along. This video, I wanted to break down the inking a little bit more and not go quite as fast as I usually do. So 
I'm gonna pinch those together to merge them. So hopefully you are finding this beneficial. Let me know down in the comments if you are. Made another new layer here because as we do the hair, we're gonna do the same technique here because I wanna go over the edges. So we'll start to pull down the hair here. I'm gonna do a little bit thinner of a line here since that's where that light source is coming in from. I'll erase to get a little bit more of a taper there where those meet. Just like that. We'll erase the overlap here. Coming over here, the same thing. We'll get a little bit thicker of a line back here. Not too crazy, but just a little bit thicker there. Racing the overlap. Once again, you can see the difference between those lines. It's not night and day difference of thickness. It's just a hint of uh, a different thickness there. I'm gonna go ahead and merge these again then. And if you have trouble pinching those together, you can also tap this and hit merge down on your top layer. Erase these lines a little bit here. So they're not as far up. And then we'll make another new layer here. Back to my brush. We'll get this line coming across here. Kind of holding down once again to lock it in. And then we can come back to our bottom layer to erase those overlaps there. Back up to the top layer again for the other brim of the hat here. Once again with this, a little bit thinner here on the top and then thicker on the back. A little bit thicker there too. You can see the, the thin area is going to be right there. Going back to the eraser and erasing the overlaps there. And then I'm going to go ahead and pinch those to combine them so they'll be on one. See, we're slowly making our way through here. Once again, another new layer here for the top part of the hat. I'll zoom in a little bit more so we can see. Kind of thin here and thicker here in the back. And you'll see as I do this too, I'm not following along 100% with the sketch layer. So the sketch is really just more of a kind of suggestion where everything goes. It's not the be all end all. And I think if you really spend too much time making sure every single line is lined up with your sketch layer, you're gonna lose a lot of the, the kind of organic feel to your design that you get just from winging it. The sketch always has just a lot of kind of motion to it and there's a lot of energy behind sketches. And if you, you get too worried about making sure everything lines up, you lose a lot of, of that feel. Now I was gonna have this have a gap here in the back, but I think because of the way I decided to do it, I'm gonna bring this further down. So it's actually gonna come here and back up rather than having a gap right there. I like that thicker area. So once again there too is just kind of changing things on the fly, adding in some little folds like this to the fabric. Same thing here. Going in a race in and just add in some folds there. Once again, adds just a little bit more character to not only the character itself, but just also the accessories like this. All right. Finally then, we've got the eyebrows here. So let me merge these together. One more new layer here. Still using that streamline, and we'll get the, the eyebrows here. A little bit thicker on that back side and thinner here on the front. Same thing here. Just like that. Using the eraser to kind of clean those up. And then we can come back in with the eraser here to erase the overlaps on that other layer. Try that again. Oh, I don't like this line here. So I need to kind of erase that. We'll make that part of the beard, but I gotta be careful not to erase that top line. So you can see there just kind of the, the extra care that it takes to make sure that you don't erase something you've already done. That really shows you the benefits of using this multiple layer inking approach. All right, so I'm gonna go ahead and merge those two together. Finally, I'm gonna come back in and do two more things with my eraser here. I'm gonna zoom into the eyes. I'm gonna erase some highlights in here, just like that. 
Also going to kind of clean this up. That eye was sticking out a little bit too much there. Need that a little bit straighter. So that's one thing there. And then also here on the beard, we'll add in some more of the lines kind of like this, just to add in some tapered effects. Clean up this line real quick. And we'll do this on another new layer so we have that same ability to come in here and erase. So I'm just gonna do a couple of thin tapered lines here. Pulling back out and over so we can see. A couple of thin ones here. One thing I would suggest against is zooming in too much when you're trying to do something like the eyes from left to right. If you get in here too close like this and you can't see the left to right to make sure they're lined up, kind of the same thing down here with the, the mustache. I see an overlap there I missed. You wanna be able to kind of have a full pulled out view of everything when you're trying to get something symmetrical, not 100% symmetrical, because that's never a good thing, especially doing human characters like this, but you wanna be able to see the full view. Also on areas like this, it's good to pull back out to get a view before you start doing some tapered strokes, say on this side, because you don't want to do the exact strokes here, because it's going to just look a little too mechanical. So instead of starting from the bottom there, I'm actually going to come up here to the top and pull some down. Let me probably pull some down here too on the lip. Kind of having one in the center here, and then these kind of trail off, almost kind of spherical coming out of that lip. Kind of builds up some volume there. And Builds up the shape. All right. I think maybe doing one more right here, not touching anything, but just kind of off there in the center. Balances that out a little bit better. Okay, so let's go up here. Let's pinch these together. Let's turn off our sketch layer, and you can see what we're left with on our inks layer here. Pretty strong, solid design, very sharp nice lines, really makes it pop already. And we're ready to then move into the next phase, which is adding the color flats. So to begin the color flats, we're gonna come up here to layers. We're gonna make a new layer. I'm gonna drag and drop this below layer two. And then we're gonna click on layer two. Tapping that, we're gonna make this a reference layer. So what this allows us to do is we're gonna be able to drag and drop our colors onto layer three, and they will show up on that layer using that layer two as a guide. So everything kind of falls in almost like a coloring book, just really quick, and that's gonna help us when we go in to do the shadows and the highlights. So now that we've got that set, we're gonna come back down to layer three, come up to our color palette, and I'm gonna select the peach color first for the skin. And as I drag and drop this, pay attention right here to the center of the screen the top you'll see continue filling with recolor comes up. I tap that and you'll see the cursor here comes up and it filled in the eye. So what we can do here now is we can drag this down and as we do areas, we can fill those in real quick, just like that. All right, next up then, let's go ahead and I think looking at him, I almost think now he needs some ears too. I don't think we drew any ears on the sketch, but just looking, I think that's something that's missing. So let's do that real quick before we go any further. I'm gonna make a new layer, going back to my inks color here, and I want the ears to come in around here. So I need to erase that line to make sure that they don't overlap anything. And we'll just do some, just kind of tiny ears. They're gonna be mostly hidden by that beard and the hair. We'll get those in there. I think it just needs a little bit more of that peach color around. Yeah, I think that looks better. And we're gonna pinch those together and we're still on that reference. So back to this layer for the color flats and we'll fill those in now. And that's something too, as kind of a, uh, a point of interest, Feel free as you're going through the design to always kind of critique your work and look where you can maybe add stuff or subtract, uh, subtract stuff if it doesn't work too. That's always a, a good option too, is if something's not working, take it out and you can always add too. 
I'm gonna turn off the background here so you can see. We need to fill in the eyes. Even though they look like they're filled in, they're not. So I'm gonna tap the background, and just change it to that purple color so we can see that, yeah, we need to fill those in. So with layer three selected then, I'm just gonna select white and drag and drop those. Then I'm gonna zoom in here pretty tight to be able to fill in those highlights there. Since we're zoomed in here now too, I'm gonna to use the green and fill in the irises there. And you'll see sometimes I don't use the continue filling with recolor. If it's just two quick ones, I'll just do it like that. Totally up to you and your drawing style and your process though. All right, now we can switch the background color back to white. I'm gonna select the gray now but we're still on background, so let's go back to white here and click off layers. Now we're back on the color flats. So we'll gray here for the beard and the hair, continue filling with recolor, and you see how quick this fills in. Now, as I tap there, you can see it didn't fill that in. What it did was it actually hit the edge of this line. So you wanna be really careful when you're filling in areas. If you think, oh, my Apple Pencil, it didn't register. It probably did, it just hit the line. It's gonna add that basically one pixel of color around the edges of your lines, which is really gonna screw up your design. And later on, you're gonna to have to go back in and refix everything by hand, because you're gonna probably be too far through the design to go in and manually undo it. All right, so back to our color palette. Got this kind of midnight blue color here for the hat. Continue filling with recolor and grabbing that cursor here. So we'll just tap here. Once again, we've got this gap down here that's really tiny. So instead of trying to do that by hand or just guess where it's at, I'm gonna go in there and zoom in so I can see it. All right. Next up then, we've got the mouth there, which is this color here. We'll fill that in and there we go. That's pretty much the color flats, but he looks a little plain as far as the, the hat and the robe goes. So I wanna add some stars to this. We've got the uh, star color here in the color palette. So we're gonna select that yellow. I'm gonna do this a little bit different though. I'm not gonna do it on the color flats layer. I'm gonna make a new layer here. And of course, if you wanted to draw out the stars by hand, you could, it would take a long time. So for me, what I'm gonna do, I've got another brush set I released earlier this year, the Kawhi set. And yes, I know that I'm saying that wrong, uh, but the, uh, the Kawhi brush pack here, it's full of stamps, basically eyes and mouths that you can add to these different clip art pieces and make super cute Kawhi clip art. But I do have some basic shapes down here in this set and I have a star right here. So with this, I can just tap and it's gonna add the stars rather than having to draw. Now, I'm gonna go in here super, super zoomed in and you're gonna see I'm gonna twist the canvas quite a bit here because as I twist the canvas, you can see it affects the shape and the position, not really the shape, but the, the position of these stars. So I don't want them to all be going the same direction. I want them to have some variety to them. So as I twist the canvas as I go, they're all gonna go in a different direction. And don't worry about the overlaps here. We're gonna take care of those in a second as well. So we'll continue here up to the top of the hat. And this, it's really no rhyme or reason. It's just really what looks good. You can undo and redo and change the, the look of it. Here I'm gonna tap further out because I just kinda want a, a triangle part coming in there. And then we'll move down here and do the same thing. Just a little bit of a triangle up in this corner. So it's gonna take a couple times. All right, there we go. So now with that done, what I wanna do is I wanna tap on this and I wanna set it as clipping mask. And you're gonna see once I do all those outside areas, they're going to disappear. Clipping mask only will show up on the areas that you have colored in underneath it. So that's why that works like that. From here then, we can drag the color down. 
We need to turn off reference on layer two though before we do that because it's using that same line art as a reference. So turning that off will allow us to do that and it won't fill in everything. Continue filling with recolor, grabbing that cursor and then just making our way through the design. And there I missed that one. Once we have these filled in then, it's time to grab our eraser and I'm gonna erase the overlaps. Because this is folded and creased in and over, that star there wouldn't show up on the back. It's actually gonna curve around and fold into that. So that's why I erased part of that there. Just erase the rest of these that overlap the brim of the hat there. Same thing on the back side here. So we'll keep that one in there. Get the parts here that are on the beard and the hair. And a little bit right here. Once again, zooming in, I probably would not have seen that if I stayed all the way zoomed out. So zooming in is going to help you with, with areas like that as well. I think I want to add a little bit one, a little bit more of one right there too. And we can erase the, the overlaps. Just looked a little bare there. All right, and that's what we're left with. So a lot more going on now. He looks a little bit more complete there. So I think that looks a lot nicer than just leaving, you know, a plain blue or midnight blue hat and robe. So that's it for the color flats then and the design on his attire. So now we're ready to go in and add the shadows followed by the highlights. So to begin the shadows, we're gonna come up here to our layers menu, make a new layer here. We're gonna tap this layer and set it as clipping mask, just like we did with the stars. Now, even though this layer is on top of the stars, it's kind of like a hierarchy thing to where it goes down to whatever the, the first layer that the clipping masks start to point to. So even though this one here is on top of this one, it's actually pointing down to this one along with that one. I'm gonna switch my color over to this kind of dark purple color on the second row there. That's gonna be the, the color for our shadows and this is going to show up pretty dark when we start but that's okay we're going to lighten it up here shortly so to begin with I'm going to turn on reference again on layer two to allow us to drag and drop some pretty big fill areas in here you can see how dark that gets so we'll do this just to get those filled in and I think honestly, that's gonna be about it for the big fills for the drops. We're gonna do some more big fills, but we're gonna to have to draw them by hand. So we're gonna turn off reference now. And then we're gonna go back to the shadows layer. The reason I turned off reference is because, like I said, I wanted to do some big fills by hand. If I drag and drop those in once they're kind of filled in, it's gonna fill in everything. Switching back then to my streamline anchor here. So if I do a big area like this and I make sure that all these outlined areas are connected, I can drag and drop that in. You see that fills it in really quick and really easy. Here I'm gonna do a pretty big area filled in. And if you're watching this too and think, wow, that's a lot of shadows, we're actually gonna go in and remove just a little bit of these shadows as we go. I'm just getting some big areas filled in right now because we're gonna drop the opacity of this here in a second. And I wanna make sure that the opacity that we drop to looks good across all the different colors that these shadows are on top of. So a certain percent might look good on the, the dark blue of the hat and the robe, but it might not look as good on the skin color. If you're using colors that just, you can't get a good look 
between multiple colors on a layer, you can always use multiple layers for your shadows. And that way you can adjust the opacity of those separately so you have more control over the percentage that each color is going to get. And if you haven't done that before and it doesn't make sense, it will here in a second when I'm talking about the percentage of the opacity. All right, get a little bit here around the back of the nose. And you'll see as I'm doing these shadows too, I'm basically following kind of the curves and the lines that I've already laid out during that inking process. A lot of people ask, okay, how do you know where to put the shadows or how do you know to curve it there? You see here, I'm basically following that curve that already is there from the inks. Like here with the, the lip, same thing there. As I do a shadow here underneath the mustache here, same thing, I'm following that curve and I'm tapering it here and getting it wider as it comes back. So it tapers at the end there, so it tapers as well on the, the shadow itself. All right, and I'm gonna get a little bit of the blue down here, and then we'll be ready to kind of adjust the opacity. I am gonna add some more shadows here as we go, but like I said, I wanna be able to adjust the opacity to see what this looks like first. Drag and drop that in. All right. So going back up to my layers now and going N for blend mode and sliding here to the left, you can see that everything starts to kind of change. And I think here probably like a 36, 37, 39, somewhere in there, the high 30s. I think that all looks pretty good for the opacity. So here I'm just gonna clean up some of these lines. I'm gonna come in, do some erasing here over the, uh, the eyebrows, I had to overlap there. Then I'll start to get some details in here, like underneath the eyebrow that it comes into the eye there. I like to have a shadow there. Once again, where that lid is. And that's also why I do the, the thicker line there at the top as it comes around. I think that looks good. Pulling more of a shadow here. Maybe even coming up from the bottom, meeting there in the back. I might even pull this in wider. I'm not gonna taper this like I thought I was because I'm gonna have that actually come down and taper that way. Looks a little bit more believable. And with this being a cartoon, of course, you can get away with some kind of wonky stuff on shadows and highlights sometimes. It doesn't have to be perfect because it is a cartoon. We're not going for super realistic, but I like to get it as close as possible. Now with these lines here that we used in the hair, we can also use that same technique down here by pulling in some tapered lines here. You can see too, I've got some gaps here where I didn't have my color drop threshold turned up high enough when I dropped in the colors. So that's why I've got some white gaps around there. If you've got some the same two, when you drag and drop a color, if you hold down your Apple Pencil and slide it to the right as you fill in that color, it'll fill in those little gaps a little bit better. So doing those tapered lines, like I said, you can do those with the, oops, I'm on the wrong color here, with the shadows as well as with the actual inking stage. So if you think you wanna add more in later, you can also add them in too with the, uh, with the highlights when we go to do that here in a second. And you'll see here, as I'm doing this, I'm starting to twist the canvas now in addition to zooming in. I find that your, your wrist and your arm, the way that they just kinda of naturally wanna work on a curved line won't always be you know, on a perfect straight canvas, you'll want to kind of get something that feels comfortable to your drawing style. And that's why you'll see me start to, to twist those around. Get inside this ear here. 
All right, so I'm pulling back. You can kind of see what we're left with. I'm going to pull in just a couple more of these coming out of here. Once again, zooming in really tight. And this one, I'm just continuing, continuing that line out. Even though it's the, the ink slime, I'm still continuing that out. All right, looks good. Now we're gonna go in and remove some. So eraser, the reason why I remove is like right here. It's just a solid shadow color. There's no difference in value. You can't really tell it's a shadow because you can't see what the unshadowed value is. So if we go in here just with our eraser, and just start pulling away from the edges just a little bit and see that now we can actually tell, okay, I can see that that's a shadow there. And do the same thing here, just around this back corner of the hat. Just kind of freeze that up. And then if you go too far with it, just grab your brush again and fill the shadow color back in. Do the same thing along the back here that in do the same thing here and this also works with these lines we can pull in a tapered line there so it kind of brings out those hairline tapers even more we can pull along the edge here Let's pull that out just make it really thick there at the bottom along this edge too. Once again, starting out with the taper and then getting thicker down as we go, we widen up the stroke. Same thing there. We go back in with the brush and kind of clean that up. Back to the eraser again. We'll pull in one down here off the arm. And that come out. One here on that belly part or the chest. Right in there as well. And I think I want to add a little bit of shadow here on the lips too. That mustache is going to be given a drop shadow there. I'll kind of pull that around and maybe even around the bottom a little bit. All right. There we go. And that looks pretty good. I'm going to add a few more shadows here underneath. There. And then I think two here underneath the eyes. We'll kind of add in some tapered shadows kind of to give him a more of an elderly feel. With this one being as shadowed in as it is, though, I think to do that, I'm going to go back up to my lines layer. And I'm going to use the outlines to do that instead. So we'll just use some really thin tapered lines here underneath the eyes. Like I said for those kind of wrinkle lines here. We'll just pull some here and around there. That kind of brings home that aged look a little bit better there. All right. Looking good. Next up then, let's go ahead. I think everything's removed there to where we need it. Everything looks good. Maybe a little bit more shadows here underneath the beard. Of course, that's gonna have a little bit of a drop shadow there. I think I did say we're gonna have a little bit of a light source coming from the bottom too though. So I don't wanna go too crazy here. Just a little bit. Let's see a little start clipping through there too. All right, so that's the shadows. Let's go ahead then from here and move on to the highlights. So to do the highlights, same process as the shadows. We're gonna go to that shadow layer, make a new layer here. We're gonna tap that and we'll set that as clipping mask as well. And then we're gonna go to our color palette. We're gonna choose this bright teal color that we talked about earlier. And same process here. I'm gonna zoom in and start to add the light source coming in. Once again, kind of like a bounce light from the bottom here and then that light coming from the top left hand corner as well. Going along the edge of the beard here. And you'll see this is also why I like to do these all on separate layers. If you go outside of the lines too much, you can always go in and fix that. And right here, having them on a different layer than the shadows, if I overlap the shadows somewhere, I don't have to worry about erasing those shadows that I already did and having to move back 
to the, the shadow color and the color palette. It just saves a lot of time and gives you a lot more control over your end product. So you can hear just the same technique, following the curves, following the tapers, getting thicker here at the end because the beginning here is more tapered. And since this light source is coming in here on the left, I'm using the left-hand side of these lines as where that color goes. It goes on the left. Pulling some here on the mustache. That one, I didn't really like the way that line went, so we'll get kind of thinner here and thicker up in the back if we can. You're pulling that line out and continuing it down. Coming here across the nose, we'll get that left hand side in there. It's gonna race in those overlaps and getting more of a taper. Get the inside of the eyes here too. It's again here, same thing. It's thicker here at the top, so put in a little bit more just to follow that line. those in there. Hit the uh, eyebrow here. The ear here. Let's go ahead and get the brim of the hat here coming in from the side. And then the top of the hat. Now once again, this is really dark. You can't see the stars, but that's okay because we're gonna go in just like we did with the, the shadows and we're going to adjust the opacity of this. So we'll be able to see through these here in a second and those stars will become visible again. Don't wanna get in too heavy here because of course this brim is gonna kind of knock out that highlight, but we'll still have a little bit coming in from the bottom there. All right, and I think that is pretty good. I'll maybe do couple more of the hair strands just like this on that side maybe a couple more on this one too all right that looks good get in here and hit on this side of these just a little bit there Okay, before we adjust the opacity of this though, I want to give this kind of a nice glow because like I said, we've got this kind of mystical magical thing going on. So let's go ahead and let's duplicate this layer. And on this bottom one, what I want to do is I want to select that. I want to go over here to my adjustments menu and I want to go to Gaussian blur here. We're going to slide this to the right a little bit. You're going to see we're starting to get this nice glow coming off those lines so it kind of brings home that like i said that mystical feel the wizardly kind of vibe that this has got going on we want it to to have that going for it so with that done then we're ready to adjust the opacity so if we go to that top layer and start to drop this down maybe about oh probably 20 23 24 percent the reason why I want to do this on top of this and have both of these layers is because with our shadows, we have those hard edge lines and it would give it too much of an airbrush look with just doing it on one layer. So here we still have those hard edge lines. They just kind of fade out and go further. Now from here, it's up to you. If you want to go in with an eraser and some of these areas that come further out on that bottom one, you can go in here and erase these by hand. The problem is, depending on how much of a blur that you did, like here, you're gonna to start to actually go into the area that you have the other part coming into, and it's gonna look kind of weird. Like here, you'll see, if I would go in and erase this part, zooming in here, it just looks muddied now. So I'm actually gonna leave that there, but there's certain areas that you can come in and actually remove, like here would be okay to remove that overlap. You just wanna make sure you get all of it because you don't want a little bit of that glow sitting there against that darker color. It just looks, looks kinda weird. So there's that. 
And then I think finally, I want to give him just a little bit of a rose color to his face. So let's do that and then we'll add a background in to kind of close everything out. So if we go down to layer three, make a new layer on top of here, you'll see since we already had that clipping mask layer here, it just creates a clipping mask layer for us. And then I'm gonna grab this pink color on the bottom row. We'll zoom in here so we can see, and I'm just gonna knock in a pink area there. And then just like we did with that glow, we're gonna come in here and go to Gaussian Blur again. And we'll just slide this to the right to give him a nice rosy glow there. If it's too dark, you can come back up to your layers menu and hit the end for blend mode and kind of drop it down a little bit to where you're happy with it. And then finally, I want to do the cheeks. So I'm going to make another new layer to do these. Now the, the blend or the blur that we use for the Gaussian blur, if you do a small area like this, obviously the percentage that it takes to blur this is not going to be as much as the percentage that takes to blur a larger area like this. So that's why I like to do these smaller areas on a separate layer. So just like the opacity that I talked about earlier, you can control the Gaussian blur separately from the big areas and the small areas to get the exact percentage that you want. So once we have that done, we can go back in and drop down the opacity to whatever we think looks good. And that's what we're left with. All right. Finally then, let's go ahead and add a quick background here. So I'm gonna come down to layer one. I'm gonna make a new layer. Coming up to my color palette, I've got this orange in here. So let's drag and drop that in the background. And then I'm gonna come up here to the arrow to transform and using distort down here, I'm just gonna start to pull in the sides, the corners of the design here. Just kind of give this geometric shape here in the background. And there we go. Super basic, super easy, but he's just not sitting there on a plain white background. And then finally to round everything out, I'm just going to make one more new layer to do my signature. And then that will be it for today's video. All right. So there we go. How to draw a cartoon wizard from start to finish using the iPad and Procreate. Hopefully you guys enjoyed today's video tutorial. If you did, make sure you give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and hit that bell for notifications so you can get alerted when I post new videos just like this one. And like I said at the front of the video too, if you guys take part in any of these tutorials, if you follow along, definitely share your work online. If you're on Instagram or Twitter, post them there and tag me at BJ Dell so I can get a chance to see them and you can possibly have a chance to see your work featured in one of my upcoming video intros just like the people you saw at the beginning of today's video. So that's it for me. I can also be found online, bjdell.com. So until next time, keep creating.